You can use Claude to generate a whole bunch of code for you, but I thought it would be more interesting to see if it could also maybe teach me something. And the way that I went about that is to implement these interactive notebooks that try to explain algorithms to me. And this example was pretty cool, so I figured I'd make a small video about it. So what you're looking at over here is the Himmelblau function. And uh, just to set the stage, the goal here is to find the global optimum, which is located over here. But as you can see, if you're trying to find the lowest point, uh, there's a risk that if you start doing hill climbing, that you're going to go down and down and down, and that you're going to end up in a local optima over here, or maybe over here, or maybe even down below over here. So you could try and do gradient descent. It's just going to cause you to maybe go to a place you don't want to go into. So we're looking for an algorithm that's maybe a bit more robust. So that maybe one thing you could do is you could say, well, uh, I'm always going to sample. Let's say that I start over here. I'm just going to take some sort of a radius. I'm going to sample away. And that way, you know, there's a chance that I'm going to end up in that direction instead of that direction. And and, you know, it's, it's not necessarily a bad idea, but you do get into a problem then of, oh, if I start over here, uh, how big of a space should I take to maybe search in? Should I start small? Should I uh, start big? And also at some point you want to narrow it down. The whole point of evolutionary strategies is that you're definitely going to sample as a sampling based uh, approach, which is cool because it also means you can do things with non-differentiable functions. But uh, the thing that's interesting here is that we are going to sample. So, you know, region, uh, this is the mean, we're going to sample a bunch. And after sampling, we are going to update such that we define a new mean to move to. And then we're going to sample again but we are also updating uh, the radius, so to say, or the variance of how we're going to sample. And the big picture idea here is that this is going to be something that's dynamic. So depending on what we come across, we might have a good reason to increase the search space, and we also might have a good reason to decrease it. And, you know, uh, it's pretty easy to tell Claude to go ahead and uh, write down all the math, which is what it actually did too. Um, so, you know, there's a Gaussian distribution, there's an update rule, all those things are really cool. But if you're just going for intuition, the first thing that you want to do is maybe just do stuff with charts. And one cool thing about these LLMs is that you can make that for you relatively quickly. And the nice thing about having all this in a notebook is that you can also do more than just eyeballing. You can actually just have a look at the code and see if all of it makes sense, even if it compares well to the formula. So here's a demo that I uh, ended up creating. On top over here, there are a whole bunch of settings that you can go for. So uh, what's the population size, how many iterations, uh, learning rates for the average propagation and for the sigma, the variance, uh, starting points and uh, iteration. And then the whole point is that on this chart over here, you see this big region that we're sampling from. That's the red. And I can, uh, let me just do this with the keyboard. I can move through all these different iterations. You can see this thing move. And as it moves forward, you know, we're not just sampling again, we're also changing the size. And if I were to increase and increase and increase, you can see that, um, the region that we're sampling from that's becoming increasingly small over time. Uh, that is also what the chart on the right here is showing. We can, you can see that the region becomes smaller and smaller. And in this particular case, we get kind of lucky. We do hit that local optima and life is good. Now, in fairness, this algorithm isn't perfect. A lot of it depends on the parameters that you pick. So one thing we could do is we could say, well, let's set the learning rate for sigma to be quite high. Let's set the initial sigma to be a fair bit smaller. And then if I were to increase the uh, iterations here, you can see that uh, this chart is a whole lot more steep. So we're gonna go down a whole lot quicker. And you can also see that we do end up in not the global optima, which will be over here. We end up in the local one instead. So again, this, this algorithm, you know, it's not perfect, but I was thinking like, okay, that's, that's kind of interesting, but I want to get a bit more of an intuition on how individual points actually help determine uh, where we are going to be moving next. And what is kind of nice about this situation is that I am able to, uh, you know, at least click around. I am able to say like, hey, let's uh, start searching somewhere down below over here. And then when I start sampling, if I look at the charts below that, then you're going to see this big orange arrow over here. And that means that we're going to go from here to here. Uh, that's the center of the population where we're going to move next. And what's pretty interesting here is you can actually see there's this one arrow that's saying, nope, don't go over here. Uh, definitely go that way. And the lighter the color, the more influence it has. And that's, again, because we're taking the actual value that's uh, on the service itself. But you can see that it's pulling this thing in all sorts of different directions. Different population members really want to go into a different direction. We average that, and that's how we end up going from here uh, to here as the center for the next iteration. And then we move on and do the same thing, but for the variance, because there's a couple of points that are telling us to, uh, you know, search in a smaller space. And there's a couple of points that are saying like, no, like we want to be in a bigger space. And then this candidate over here is pretty interesting. That's a really bad performing candidate that was sampled far away. This one is saying like, no, like where you were is way better. Uh, make the area shorter. And there's a couple of points that performed worse. And those are all indications of, no, you got to be closer to where you were because sampling far away is not a good idea. And then you've got all these other points over here that suggest that 
it is a good idea to actually expand and move a bit bigger. It's a bit subtle, but it's nicely reflected in this chart. Um, we start down, you know, not low, but we do go up a little bit before we go back down again. That's because a lot of these points down below over here suggest that that's a good idea to do. I can make that a little bit more drastic by setting the initial sigma to be uh, really small. And, and then, uh, you know, this chart over here becomes a bit more pronounced. It goes up, then it goes down as we do the search. And as we iterate, uh, let me just sample a few points. I think this chart over here is going to be most interesting. So a few iterations, a few iterations. Okay, we do get stuck in a local optima, but we, you can see how it moves. And a final thing that could be interesting is we do have a learning rate for that sigma value, and we could set that learning rate to be uh, quite small. And you can see that when we do that, it becomes a bit more smooth on this chart over here. And if I were to go through some iterations, we still end up uh, in the local optima. We just take a slightly different path. Uh, but there you go. This is evolutionary strategies. And the point where we're at right now with Claude is that it's actually pretty easy to generate notebooks like this. And if you're interested in learning about algorithms where you don't necessarily need a data set, all you need is just some charts and some code, boy, oh boy, can Claude help you with that. My recommendation is to actually give this a spin, if only because it's quite fun. But also as far as like code and reviews goes, uh, the nice thing about having a notebook is that you do end up having an environment where, oh, there's all sorts of charts at your disposal that actually help you debug. So it's not like it's generating 16 files and good luck with the review. No, it's all in one file and debugging this is you know, a nice interactive experience. So that's uh, quite a boon. If you're going to give this a spin though, one thing to be aware of is you totally can't trust Claude blindly. If you tell it that you're interested in understanding a certain phenomenon, that you want to see a chart with a clear effect, it will actually do a little bit of cheating here and there. So keep that in mind. You actually do want to have charts and do actually want to look at the code as well. But moreover, and that's I think also the fun exercise here, if you want to learn a lot with these notebooks using Claude as a helper, you're going to notice that you want to prompt it in a very different way. You don't want it to generate the entire notebook in one go. If you generate one cell at a time, kind of in this append only mode, odds are that it's a lot easier for you to review each chunk as it's coming in. And then it's also a lot more meaningful to see charts pop up as intermediate results. Right now, you still have to really instruct Claude to give you that behavior. Uh, but I am curious to see if it might be easy to build something on top of something like open code to get you an agent that is just only going to focus on this kind of uh, experience. You're only going to be making these notebooks to help you learn something. I know, might be fun. Because I do think uh, if we're going to have all these LLMs actually help us, it will be cool if they can actually help us learn something. And something about doing stuff like this in a notebook, I think, uh, could be a path forward. We'll see.